Bikram Yoga versus Barkin Yoga. And we also have to put in Vishnu Ghosh Yoga into that equation. I'm talking about hot yoga. So hot yoga became popularized by Bikram Yoga in the 1970s, started turning on the heat, doing yoga in heat rooms with a particular sequence. And then around the year 2000, yoga exploded across the world. So Bikram and hot yoga, which is rooted from his teacher, Vishnu Ghosh, exploded. So I want to explain a little bit about Bikram's approach to the subject of hot yoga, how it compares and changed from his teacher, which is really important to note, Vishnu Ghosh, and then how I, as Bikram's most senior teacher, and also changed it up and had my approach, a different approach to the same style of yoga. Before I tell you the next tip, I want you to hit the subscribe button. If you're enjoying this video, smash the like button, share it with your friends. You want to learn all about hot yoga, tutorials, flows, factoids like this particular video, make sure to hit the subscribe button, hit the like button right now. So when Bikram came to America, or came to the West, his approach was to change it up because he saw firsthand, we had a different physiology. People in the West opposed to people from the East. We had a little bit bigger bones, taller. So what he wanted to do was create a sequence of poses that was accessible for the Western anatomy, especially for men. You'll probably most likely see more men in a hot yoga class or a Bikram class than you will in other styles of yoga. One of the reasons why Bikram chose these particular poses and the world knows that it's 26 postures and two breathing exercises. In the very beginning, we do a breathing exercise and in the very end we do a breathing exercise. So the two breathing exercises bookend the 26 postures, unless of course you're counting Shavasana, which is probably one of the most important poses that we don't want to discount that. But the very beginning exercise we do is a breathing exercise. The very end is the breathing exercise, but the 26 postures in between, except for a little Shavasana at the end, that's the heart and soul of Bikram Yoga. And that's the class that he predominantly taught and certified thousands and thousands of teachers to teach. He also has a 91 posture advanced class. Somewhere down the road, they conveniently molded into what they called the 84 classical positions, but there were originally 91 postures in Bikram's advanced class. And the reason why that shows the number 84, because it was written in yogic history that there were 84 basic asanas, but these weren't the original 84 basic asanas. It's way too old of a subject to determine exactly what these 84 poses were. It was very presumptuous was to say that the 84 postures, really 91 in Bikram's advanced class were the original 84 postures. But what Bikram did was from the basic postures that he was taught by his teacher, Vishnu Ghosh, created a 26 posture sequence that people in the West could do. And that's one of the beauties of the magic of the sequence. Pretty much anybody can do it because there are modifications. And a lot of times in the Bikram world, we'll talk about that later, they don't really emphasize the modifications, but that's something that really goes back to Vishnu Ghosh. And I'll talk about that when I talk about Vishnu Ghosh because the modifications are key. And what's really important is that standing hit to knee, standing bow pose, or what Bikram calls standing bow pulling. These are postures that are not Bikram poses. They are in Bikram's sequence. This is where sometimes people get confused, especially since Bikram was trying to copyright his 26 posture sequence. The postures had been around for a long time before Bikram. He chose these 26 postures and put them in a sequence. For example, when we get to the floor poses, Cobra Locus, Full Locus, Bow is a very common sequence that's practiced by many styles of yoga. He copied and pasted it into that particular section when we get to the floor. So don't think that the postures in Bikram yoga are Bikram poses. The sequence is really what defines Bikram Yoga and his approach and his understanding of alignment, which we will talk about as well. So the 26 postures that Bikram chose were postures that were taught to him by his teacher, Vishnu Ghosh. Let's talk about Vishnu Ghosh for a second, because Vishnu Ghosh is really the innovator. He's the modern day founder of this particular style of yoga. Bikram will be the first one to tell you that. So based on what Bikram learned from Vishnu Ghosh, he chose very simple, that's why Bikram calls it his beginning yoga class, very simple postures that the Western anatomy can access, tight hips, bigger bones, bigger bodies. When I would do standing bow, Big Warren always show me off. He would say, you know how hard it is to do that posture in that big body of his. So Western anatomy is completely different. But let's talk about first how Bikram changed his approach from Vishnu Ghosh. Here's a quick story about Vishnu Ghosh. When he was young, there was a wonderful book that was written by his oldest brother, and the book was called Mejda, which means second oldest. And he was writing the book about Yogananda, who was the author's younger brother, because he was the oldest. Yogananda was the second oldest, Vishnu Ghosh was the youngest. So in that book, Mejda, the older brother talks about how Vishnu Ghosh was taken ill when he was young. And Yogananda, 
prescribed to him, and this is really important because this is what set up Vishnu Gosha's life, prescribed to him a sequence of poses, and he had this miraculous healing, and then decided to dedicate his life to helping people heal through practice of yoga, specifically pranayama and asana, most predominantly asana. So he chose the yogic asana to heal the body. So he has a whole gymnasium in Calcutta, India. People come to that studio not because they want to do standing head to knee and get better in standing bow and wear Lululemon. They come to that studio to be healed, like you would go to a physical therapist or an acupuncturist. They would go to Vishnu Ghosh. So it was like this clinic, a healing clinic that he used to help people. So let's say somebody comes in and they have a lower back issue. Now Bishan Ghosh's back then would prescribe a sequence of poses, focus and target on that lower back. Somebody's got really tight hips or arthritis in their hips, prescribe a different sequence for hip openers to help that person with their hips. Somebody has breathing exercises and asthma. They would give them pranayama exercises and some yogic asana to help with the breathing. You can see the difference. People would go into different corners of the studio or the gymnasium. They would do their own sequence based on Vishnu Ghosh's prescription. Now, Bikram found if he were to take this particular approach to America, as soon as he turns his back, people will get out of integrity within the pose. So he wanted to create glass where everyone's doing exactly the same. So therefore, he chose as a sequence that would address all the areas of the body. And that's one of the things that Bikram changed when he came to America. Now, Vishnu Ghosh didn't just have a yoga studio. He taught wrestling. He taught track gymnastics and part of the gymnastic influence allowed him to create more of an athletic style a more calisthenic style of yoga asana like for example our version of half moon pose is more of an as calisthenic stretch for the side body as a warm-up to get you ready to do the exercise but his main thing was weightlifting and body sculpting. So what he did was he combined modern athletics and weight training with yoga. And that he said that was his key to success. The key to the kingdom of health was weight training along with yogic asana. And again, this is where Bikram changed his approach. So Bikram yoga was different than Vishnu Ghosh yoga because when Bikram comes to the West, first he went to Mumbai in India. Then he went to Japan. Then he went to Hawaii, San Francisco, and eventually ended up in Beverly Hills. Now he's back in India again, so his life went full circle. But when he came to the West, he cut out the weightlifting, and I think he was smart to do that. He just taught yoga. The 26 posture, two breathing exercises, and in the, in the afternoon they would do the advanced class, but when he started certifying all these people to do yoga, he really didn't like people doing the advanced class. Only a select few were able to teach Thank goodness I was one of them because I was never really subject to the Bikram 26 and 2 postures for my own practice. I was doing Bikram's 91 posture advanced class three months into my practice and I did it every single day. So when we did three, four classes a day, and I've told you that before in my teacher training program, and I took that with me when I went to Florida as well, one of those classes was the advanced class. So I had that extra range of motion that I did on a regular daily basis to add more range of motion and more flexibility and strength. And that's one of the reasons why when I created the Barker Method, I started to add more postures to the flow to add for a greater range of motion. So Vishnu Ghosh, weight training and yoga, also more therapeutic as a healing modality. Vikram comes to the West and he just does the 26th posture, two breathing exercise sequence. He does the advance, but only the select few are allowed to do it. It's 26 and two sequence. So now, as some of you know, and I've said many times in the video, I became Vikram's most senior teacher. I was his most senior teacher for about 18 years. When we split, 2002. The first thing I wanted to do, and I actually started doing it maybe a, a year or so before we split because I started to add some different postures to the sequence. Because I found that, and I, you may want to check out this video after you watch this one, I talk about what I believe was missing in the bigger sequence. And that's how I started to develop the Barkin Method. And this is a weight training concept, interestingly enough. In weight training, you don't just always do the same exercises all the time every single day or you don't do legs the same way and then you don't do arms the same way you're always going to change it up to shock the body otherwise the body gets complacent i believe the same thing happens in the yoga if you're just doing the 26 and 2 sequence and that's your only practice i believe at one point that you will create a different type of rigidity you get really strong and flexible at first but if you're just doing the 26 and 2 in my humble opinion i believe and 
or maybe I should say expert opinion, I believe that a different rigidity sets in. For example, if you're just doing the, tr the basic triangle and now you were to go, let's say, go to a vinyasa class and go into a revolving triangle, taking your spine in the other direction, you're going to have a difficult time. So that's one of the first postures I included in the Barkin method sequence was revolving triangle to take the spine in the other direction to add an even greater range of motion. And I also wanted to bring in the sun salutations, which isn't necessarily an advanced sequence, even though Bikram starts his advanced class with their version of sun salutation. And you might want to check out this video after you watch this one. And I talk about and I show and demonstrate the Bikram sun salutation, which doesn't include upward dog, downward dog. So I found because those postures came more from the south and I loved the upward dog, downward dog. It was a wonderful way of opening the body. So I found, in my opinion, I thought, Starting the class with a sun salutation was a little bit better warm up than half moon. Even though I do half moon a little bit later on, I started with the sun salutation, which is more of a traditional way of opening the body. Again, adding, just adding a little different range of motion. Now, another thing that I believe Bikram overlooked, and that was more upper body strength. And I, he didn't have to because he already was stronger. He had been lifting weights. He was a weightlifting champion when he was 18 years old. Take a look at that picture. You can see how ripped Bikram was and also how ripped Bishna Ghosh was because that was one of their big things, weight training. They didn't have to do extra strength positions in yoga because they were already strong from their weight training. But if that's all you're doing, back again, if you're just doing the 26 and 2 sequence, I believe that you're not going to be as strong in the upper body. That's why I started adding double chaturangas to the flow double chaturangas to the sun salutation to start building more upper body strength. And I also believe hip openers was it definitely missing in the Bikram flow. So I started adding a lot more hip opening postures in the floor series. But one of the things that I started to do, maybe coming full circle to Bishna Ghosh, is I started to bring in sequences that would specifically address areas of the body, which then also helps to change it up. At the end of the Barking class, the last 20 minutes or so, we have different sequences that we practice every day. So now we're shocking the body. So one day we'll do hip openers. Another day we'll do a series of back bending postures. Another day we'll do a series of back strengthening postures. I change it up, shock the body to create more results, more range of motion, more flexibility. So it's actually similar to the Chris Macharian world. There's a Yangar who created a Yangar yoga, but Tabi Joyce, his version of Ashtanga yoga, and then his son Desikachar. Three different ways to approach the same style of yoga. So Bishna Ghosh, Bikram and Barkin, same thing. It's the same style. Three different ways to approach the subject. So just to sum it up and put it in perspective. Bishna Ghosh starts this particular athletic style of yoga we now have nicknamed hot yoga. Some people call it Ghosh Yoga. There's this wonderful organization called Ghosh Yoga. They were certified in Calcutta by Bishna Ghosh's granddaughter, I believe. Weight training, using yoga as a healing modality, and alignment concepts developed by Bishna Ghosh. Bikram comes in, takes the same postures that he learns from Bishna Ghosh, cuts out the weight training, cuts out the modern athleticism, just does the 26 and 2. He does add some advanced postures for people that are more of advanced practice. And the 26 and 2 sequence, like I said before, is a magical sequence to get people to open up. It's a great healing sequence and definitely wonderful for the Western anatomy. I come along using the same style of yoga as Bishna Ghosh, same style of yoga as Bikram. I come along and I consider myself a big part of that lineage and found a few things I saw were missing, a few things that I saw within my own practice and my students' practice that I wanted to include that were a little different but still stay true to the style of yoga. To honor Bishna Ghosh and to honor Bikram, of course, in my classes and my teacher training programs, which I do all the time, just a different approach based on my experience. So that's our episode for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. You want to learn all about hot yoga, factoids, and flows, hit the like button, share it with your friends, and I will see you in the next video. Bye, everyone.